Hey everybody, Cole Holland here. Today we're going to break down some Mike Stern concepts. I recently did a transcription of his solo on Straight No Chaser, and we'll be using that as lesson material to dig into some of his most notable traits as a guitarist. In this video we're going to cover 10 topics. Begin with chord substitutions, go into chromaticism, diminished patterns, fourths and chordal licks, extended turnarounds, uh, string skipping, ascending scales and arpeggios, blues licks, bebop language, and the length of his lines. Let's dig in. All right, beginning with some chord ideas here, we're going to start on bars 85 through 97. This is one of Mike Stern's most useful tools that he will use in soloing. What he'll do is he'll take a note and pedal on that note, and then he'll interchange other notes and chords beneath that. In this case, we're pedaling on C, the fifth of the key. We're in the key of F while interchanging notes F and E flat beneath that, like so. When he gets to the two chord, we're gonna do a two sus shape, G, D, F, and then to an A flat quartal shape over the five, if you will. Really just one big five chord. We were to analyze this shape over C, we have tensions flat 9, sharp 11, and flat 13. Moving towards the end of the solo, bars 229 through 236, same concept, this time pedaling on A flat, the flat third of the key, interchanging between two shapes here. This shape I call the Mike Stern shape, over F it's analyzed as an F7, sharp 9, natural 13, lower at a half a step, keep A flat up high. Over B flat, it is a B flat 7 sharp 9 voicing. This phrase sounds like this. Bar 237, G minor 7th voicing, bar 238, the stern chip again, C7 sharp 9 natural 13, 239 to 240. Starting off with the fifth, moving this shape down on whole steps, kind of like a whole tone riff, one big five chord. Resolving to the one, major seventh uh, add nine voicing, however, over F. F7, sus four, natural 13. Moving up in whole steps and back. 245 of the four chord, same thing. Up a whole step, 247. Uh, a half diminished with the 11th, however over F it's simply a F7-9 with 13th. 248, the stern shape, one big D altered chord, D7 flat 9, sharp 11. Pedal tone approach once again, this time pedal tone on D with a G minor 7th voicing beneath that, transitioning to a C7 altered voicing, a C7 sharp 5, natural 9. <laughs> Going to an F, high F pedal tone and half notes, going between two quartal or suspended voicings, whatever you like to call them. Just on G, now to a standard G minor 7th uh, voicing, the stern shape over the 5 polychord, B over C, this can be considered a, a, a 5 altered, ending with the stern shapes. Moving on to chromaticism, another major part of Mike Stern's playing. We're going to start with the last two beats of bar 34, going into the first two beats of bar 35. Starting on B flat, we're going to approach C chromatically and then resolve back down to B flat. Going to inside approach to C, chromatically resolving back down to B flat. Last two beats of bar 46 going into 51. This is probably one of Mike Stern's most famous uses of chromaticism. You'll hear it a lot, this line. What he'll do is take a note, start on the note G in this case, down two half steps chromatically, back to the starting note G, then down a minor third. He'll use this to kind of approach uh, arpeggios and other lines of any sort. In this case, he's gonna go into an E diminished arpeggio. Resolving on C, going into the same line, but unlike what we just did, instead of resolving on A, he resolves on A flat. So down a major third from our starting note of C. 
And now he's going to color a uh, kind of a minor 2-5 sound approach to F. Use usage of uh, C half whole there. And this time he will approach the A and fall on that. And then uh, from the A, he will go up a uh, A half diminished arpeggio. So the whole line sounds like this. Starting at almost the beginning here of this really monster line, bars 54 through 60, some really cool chromaticism and diminished approaches too going on, but focusing on the chromaticism, we're going to have some chromatic and diminished approaches leading us into G minor, and some chromatic and diminished approaches on C taking us back to F. So starting on C, the note C, that's a whole half approach there. Coloring a D7 flat 9, taking us into the G minor idea. So from the F sharp with the G flat, go chromatically to B flat. And now this will, Mike Stern will use a lot. You'll recognize it instantly. I'll do that half of the time. And then what he did here, he added in that little flat 9. A flat, F sharp, G. Now I'll go up G minor. Back down the same kind of idea. And now instead of going down a straight chromatic from here, which is cool, but not as colorful as what he did. Just change it up a little bit. E approaching F, down a whole step, E flat, E flat approaching D, down G minor some more. Get on B natural just for a second, off it, back to B flat, F sharp half full, approaching G minor. Now we're going to do the chromatic leg we learned earlier, into E diminished. Once we hit the C, to A flat, E half whole, coloring the five chord, taking us back home. Here's the whole line. Bar 99, the same lick that we saw at bar 55 except this time we're going to approach C as opposed to G. Bars 146 and 147, a combination of two concepts we've gone over. First, for measure 55, we have that G minor idea with the flat nine in there, now up an octave. As opposed to resolving on the G, we're going to resolve back to the flat nine and do the other little chromatic thing we went over. That one, not this one, that one. Combine them both. Bars 222 and 223, again, almost the same kind of line we saw at bars 54 and 55, except this time we're going to approach B flat, and we're not going to add in that little uh, flat 9 thing we were seeing. So, the, starting with the diminished line, we're going to start in E flat. Once we get to A natural, go chromatic. Now approach B flat. to take that out. All right, moving on to diminished patterns. Let's go back to the beginning of the solo, the end of bar 35 going to 36. If you remember in the chromaticism ideas, we had this. Once we get that B flat, we're going to go back up to D. Now once we go back to that B flat there, we're gonna go down C half whole. Ending on the A, taking us back to F. Bars 80 through 84, we're gonna begin with an F sharp half whole diminished approach to G minor. Up G minor. F sharp, resolve to G, and now switch the F sharp to an F natural, going down to E natural. Up an E fully diminished arpeggio to color the five chord five seven flat nine. Once we hit that C sharp, go up a whole step to D sharp or E flat. Down another diminished arpeggio. This time, just an F sharp diminished or really simply a C diminished. Just different ways to color the five chord using diminished patterns. Then go up to B flat and do a B flat diminished. off to F, continuing on with the rest of the line. Bars 102 
102 to 104. We have a really useful, very quick uh, diminished pattern that's really cool. Uh, we start on 101, we hit that four chord, a simple B flat minor lick. We've got a whole step, here comes a diminished pattern off of A flat. Analyzes an A flat whole half or uh, a variation of B flat half whole. Move that whole pattern down a whole step, same thing. Over the one chord now, it's F half whole diminished. Go down F half whole diminished scale. To approach the five, here's the riff. Bars 189 through 204, we have this ascending diminished pattern from hell. All right, starting with an F, uh, F major lick. Going into an F sharp half hole diminish. On that D flat, starts the phrase. Kind of like an F diminished thing it starts on. So it goes up in half steps. Half step up. Half step up. Half step up. Hit the E natural, the E diminish. It's gonna sound like E half diminish, but it's really setting us up for the next diminished pattern a half step away. Back to E diminish. All the way up. Here's the whole thing. Bars 225 to 228, some colorful uses of the half whole diminished patterns here. So it sounds like we're in the key of D flat briefly, resolving to E flat minor, the two chord, but really we're just going to be thinking about uh, altered uh, D chord here. With D half whole diminished, E flat diminished arpeggio, resolving to B flat, resolving to like the two chord, G minor, and then hit C, then go chromatic from C. And then the use of the E half whole diminished pattern at the end there. Here's where the whole lick sounds. <laughs> Moving on to some fourths ideas and concepts. Saxophones and piano players really soak up this kind of stuff and use it a lot in their playing, but any player can and will use them a lot. Mike Stern uses it quite a bit in this solo. The first example we have is uh, bars 73 through 76, the beginning of a new chorus here. He's kind of revolving around an F minor pentaton shape quite simply, starting off with a fifth. Uh, with force above those of one small adjustment. So C to F, B flat to E flat, A flat to D flat, F to B flat. When we hit that A flat, do an A flat triad. Once we hit that C, C to F. B flat to E flat, A flat back to the force at the end there. Here's how the riff sounds. Bars 121 through 126, another kind of F minor pentatonic shape thing with fourths. Rubbing around F, B flat, C, F. He's going to go up a half step from F to F sharp and do some fourths there quickly. F sharp to B, B to E. And you know, like E F sharp G sharp, kind of like a E major over B flat sound, or F diminished major seven sound. Um, some really cool colors there. Bars two fifteen through two seventeen, one of the coolest riffs in the solo. I love it. Coming off a C whole tone riff. We're on that C up a fourth to F, down a minor third D. B flat, A flat, so a B flat seven voicing there. From the A flat up a fourth to D flat, or enharmonically C sharp, C sharp, B, F sharp, E. If you notice, for all you guitar players, which I'm sure is mostly guitar players watching this, same shape, just move down a string set. So, once we hit that E, we're gonna go do fourths and whole steps down. So E to A, D to G, F there. 
C, B flat again. The same shape. We're going to resolve down to A flat. Here's the whole riff. Resolving on that A flat, um, you can kind of use this to turn around going back to a one minor or a one dominant. Really cool, really colorful. All right, let's talk about extended turnarounds. What I mean by that is like um, one big two five one turnaround, playing into the two minor chord and playing into the one chord. Um, I was going to use the examples of bars forty five through fifty one, but we already touched on that and the use of chromaticism. Um, I believe it was the second example in that section. But just real quickly, I wanted to bring out bars forty nine through fifty one. I mentioned we had the A half diminished over the one chord. That's a very simple idea. But what we have here, really colorful. So although we have on 49 through 51, it's just a, the harmony of 1-4-1. One, one, you can think about it as one big one chord that turns altered. So we have the E flat, F, G, and we hit the E, F sharp going into a D major sound. It's like a D over F, right? So it's like a F7 flat 9 natural 13. So that's a really cool way of uh, doing one big turnaround that goes one altered and taking us into the four chord. Playing into the two minor chord. And again, more importantly, taking a phrase and making it into one big two five one, essentially. Um, bars 113 through 121. We're going to have some great examples of this. Has the standard harmony of the four going back to the one, and then the three six two five turnaround. However, Mike Stern pretty much is going to think about just one big two five one here. Um, over the four chord, we have the playing into the two minor concept. So that's just all E flat half whole going into G minor or G minor seven flat five. There, if you consider the D flat part of it. Right there is kind of just like a four minor. Resolving to one. F mixolydian going back into the uh, E flat half whole thing. Playing into the two minor chord. Right? At the end there, it's all just C mixolydian. When we have that E flat half whole diminished thing. You know, it's like playing into the two chord using the D7 flat nine. Colors are also it's really just like a C7 flat nine as well. You want to think about it as one big five chord. So there's no need to overcomplicate things when you're playing through some of these solos. You know, you don't have to play over each change. You know, the, the three, six, two, five. You can really just kind of play over the colors of a G minor seven to a C7 back to F. So here's the line. Bars 149 through 156. Uh, this example kind of stands alone melodically, and we're talking about these turnaround ideas only because it's really unique what he's doing to get in and around the one chord. Um, bar 149, we're on the four chord, but I hear this as D flat melodic minor. As we know, you take a five altered off the flat nine, you play melodic minor. You have a five altered sound, right? So, um, even though we're on the four chord, I think he's thinking five altered sound to get us back to the one. It still works beautifully over the four chord. I think it's kind of a way to think on the fly and to, again, I use this term a lot, but give color to these chords um, when you're playing at such a fast tempo. So we have... Resolving to the one, of course. It's all one Dorian, which still works over the A minor 7, D7, it still colors it nicely. E flat major 7, still in the realm of F Dorian. Straight G minor over the 2 there. And then we're going to go up at half steps on these triads A flat triad, A triad, B flat, B, and then single note A flat at the end there. All just coloring one big 5. So here's the. Um, Line. One 
164 to 168 on that D7, really making that F sharp clear. So you make that transition to the two minor and to the G minor as clear as possible. Up G minor. Goes into G melodic minor there at the end. Now we're gonna color the five chord, so E diminish. Hit F instead of E up high there, now go into a D flat half hole briefly. Back up to F, then go down to A flat major scale. Then change it to A flat harmonic major. Uh, landing on the C, he's gonna add the A up top to make that uh, transition to the new chorus into F major as clear as possible. Um, same concept, he's using the D flat melodic minor over C. Use A flat harmonic major, only difference is D flat melodic minor has that G flat in C, while A flat harmonic major has a G natural, but both provide those nice tensions. Here's the line. All right, moving on now to some interval skipping ideas or string skipping licks of your guitarist using fifth, sixth, and seventh intervals. Um, this solo is mainly comprised of like scale based and arpeggio based approaches to these lines, like these eighth note runs and everything, right? So it's kind of melodically refreshing when you kind of have something like this. That's bars 61 through 62. After like nine bars of just complete burning eighth notes, it kind of gives a little bit of breathing room in the solo, but like I said, above all, some melodic variation. Almost like a classical sound. Uh, let's look at a, um, like a bigger section where he uses these ideas throughout like a whole chorus. Bars 133 through 137, firstly here, it's all F mixo, simply using these uh, interval leaps. First, it's just an E flat triad, right? And then there's our six F to D, coloring the four chord. G to A to C, just a third there. And then back to using some six, like six to seventh, really, right? A to C, C to G, now we're using fifths. Keep using fifths. E flat to B flat, D to A, and then ending the phrase like that. So fourth and the third, right? And now continuing on, 141 to 145, same kind of idea, just uh, going through the changes. So now over the two chord, right? Here's a sixth again, kind of like a two minor seven with a nine. And then over the five, simple a third there, then back to using six to seven like we saw earlier. Right? And then we're gonna do, uh, even though we're on the one chord, we're still gonna kind of outline a five seven. It's like a five seven with a nine, E flat to B flat, so sharp four, then a third. And then up the scale, another inversion of a five seven. Very common one there. And then here's a beautiful six to kind of take us out. And then we're done. So here's the two lines put together. So melodically, it's, it's really pretty, honestly, and it offers a little bit of breathing room and some variation into otherwise burning eighth notes most of the time. Alright, one final example here, bar 169 to 171, uh, beginning of a new chorus starting on the one. We're going to use only six here for this example, so... C and A outline the one, just go up the scale. D and B flat, and a little, a little um, slide. E to C, right, and then resolving. Really straightforward, but really useful. All right, now let's look at some ascending scale licks with the use of like triads and arpeggios. Uh, it's a very useful tool that you can use, and Mike Stern uses a lot to start his phrases. It kind of um, gets the ball rolling, if you will, on some phrases, and it's a pretty straightforward and easy approach as well. Um, use of like some basic triads or some basic scale shapes and playing around those. So 52 and 53, we have an F minor triad and a B flat triad. So we're going to kind of play around those. Right? And that gets the ball rolling on this really long phrase goes on to the rest of that. All right, let's keep going. Bars 63 through 65, going into the four chord here, but starting on the one, it's a scale-based approach revolving around F mixolydian. So starting on the third of F, going to F.
almost up the entire scale, just skipping the E flat. And now hitting that E flat and going up an E flat arpeggio. E flat Lydian there. And although it ends with an A natural over the B flat, it still sounds really cool and works really well. It's like a really cool flowing line. So here's the whole thing. Bars 69 through 71. Very similar to the riff we just went over in the previous example. And when you listen to this solo in its entirety, you will hear this same kind of riff played at a couple different parts in the solo. So he uses this kind of idea a lot. In this particular case, we're looking at a 2-5-1, so bar 69, after that F sharp, up G minor. So we're going to visualize, uh, although it's a scale-based approach, we can visualize the triads here once again. So G minor triad, a B flat triad. To an F triad, it goes into an F major seventh arpeggio. Seventy-seven through eighty, another scale-based approach here. This time we're going to begin with a B flat seven, sharp eleven, or B flat whole tone ascending riff, going into a very simple descending F major scale. So starting on that B flat. <laughs> Really accessible to playing guitar too, as you can see. Once we hit that C, just go down to F major scale. As opposed to hitting that F, hit that F sharp to take us into the two chord like we talked about earlier in the video. Here's the whole thing. to 106 really straightforward use of a C Dorian scale over this 2-5 to get back to the 1. So starting on the C. Really straightforward there. Bars 151 to 152. This is what I was talking about and it was the same exact riff that was used on bars 69 through 71. Except this time, as opposed to starting on G, we're going to start on F and do the same exact riff. So the F Dorian kind of thing. Going into the major 7th arpeggio. So again, I'm visualizing the triads if you want to. F triad, A flat triad, E flat triad, going into the E flat major 7th arpeggio. And lastly, 217 to 226. He's taking an A mixolydian riff here and he's using it uh, to build his phrases over a couple measures. So starting with something small and using that same idea to gradually build these riffs. So starting with the small part of it. That's all it is right there at the beginning. It almost sounds like a D flat major scale. There's more of the A flat mixolydian sound and then continuing to build it. some more of his uh, Mike Stern-isms, if you will, and then continuing again to build it. And then going on to that diminished riff. All right, let's take a look at how Mike Stern incorporates the blues into his playing now. We're gonna look at the beginning of the solo, bars 26 through 30, starting off with this riff. Kind of like when you hold the one up high and walk down beneath it, right? Right, that kind of idea, so. And then to this thing, right, very uh, much in the blues vocabulary. And then same kind of phrase, bars 37 through 41. So, right, same kind of thing, holding that one and walking down beneath it. And then the same lick, just up an octave, right. 43 through 45, this is like the trademark... Mike's turn to riff, and we talk about applying blues vocabulary to jazz vocabulary and, and so forth. Uh, if you know anything about Mike Stern, he started off as a blues and rock player, and when he got to Berkeley, he got immersed in jazz, and the rest is history. So you'll hear a lot of this kind of fusion of the blues licks into all the jazz vocabulary and a lot of his solo. So this particular example here, we have that quintessential pentatonic thing. Right? goes into the bebop thing after that. Into the rest of those lines. 108 to 112, some more like really trademark Mike Stern riffs 
and his solos and he's fusing the blues riffs with the jazz stuff. Um, we're going to start this phrase with some bends and finish it with some more of the pentatonic stuff. So starting with the bend, get the one and then bend off the flat third, up to the four, back to the one and go down the pentatonic riff. At 159 to 164, the same kind of riffs we've been looking at here, starting with the F minor pentatonic thing. When we hit the A flag, I'm gonna jump up an octave and bend on it. That particular bend, he really gets it. it almost sounds like uh, in between a B natural and a B flat. Ah. If you can get it, if not, at least the B flat's fine. And then resolving, and then at the end of that phrase, he hits the F sharp to take us into the two minor chord. Here's the whole phrase. Finally, 204 to 212, some really heavy bends here. Definitely letting his uh, blues and rock history shine, right? But he uses this stuff a lot. So bending from the A flat to start with, up to the B flat, and then on that B flat, gonna bend up a whole step. And then come back down on that bend by hitting up on the uh, B string, right? And then back down a half step, same thing. And then the simple uh, blues riff that's like but using bends. And then bending up to the flat seven. Bending up to the E flat there, so. All right, let's take a look at some bebop vocabulary that Mike Stern uses in his playing. What I mean by bebop vocabulary is like uh, taking lines that you would normally hear a sax player or a piano player use in a traditional bebop setting and applying those to the guitar. That can mean anything from bringing out thirds and chord tones in your playing to like some standard um, turnarounds that a lot of bebop players will use. In this case, he's playing over a one, three, six, two, five turnaround, and it definitely sounds like some traditional bebop lines you would hear in that setting. So starting off with the fifth of F, right there in the beginning, from the fifth down to the third of F, and quickly approaching that F sharp of the sixth chord there, getting off of it, F down the D, approaching the two chord, and approaching the five chord using the chord tones. Bar 66 to 73, we've seen part of this line in another section of the video, the ascending scale lick section, but let's look at this now a little more in depth from a bebop perspective. It's definitely very sax-like, it's like a linear, straight ahead fashion, scale based approach to playing through some of these changes here. So we're going to start with the B flat melodic minor approach to color the F7, right? F7 altered. Once we have the F sharp now, approaching the two chord, we're gonna use just simply G harmonic minor. Now the lick we saw earlier in the video. And once we do that major seven arpeggio to come back down to resolve back to the one, a really straight ahead approach using C half hold diminished. Right, definitely very bebop sounding. Here's the line. As 112 through 120, we actually already touched on this line as a whole when we talked about playing into the two minor chord, but it's definitely very, very relevant in terms of uh, analyzing it as a bebop line. It's very sax like, and um, it's a great example of some bebop language on guitar. bars 175 to 181 a great use of this kind of inside playing sound you'll hear in bebop vocabulary what i mean by that is not playing inside the key but playing within close proximity from one note to the next and using a lot of chromatic approaches to chord tones so we're playing through another one three six two five turnaround here As you can hear a 
of chromatic approaches going on there. Approaching the third of F. Hitting the F sharp real quickly and then chromatically approaching the A flat. Chromatic. And now resolving back to the third. Now we're on the two chord. Still kind of approaching the two chord there. Now we're just going to approach the five all the way down. Alright, you've made it to the last section of the video. We're going to discuss the length of Mike Stern's lines. It's a very impressive trait of his playing style to be able to take um, really cool ideas and concepts that are always evolving something new over 10, 20, 30 plus bars. So um, you've heard bits and pieces of these lines throughout the video, but now it's going to come around full circle and we'll look at these lines in their entirety. So we're going to start with bars 52 to 62. I'll play it slow. Seventy-seven through ninety-seven. seven. Forty six to one fifty six. And lastly, measures one eighty one to two oh four. 